Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Airships Conquer the Skies with me, Alathrix, and of course, welcome to the last three missions of the mission mode. In the last video, we managed to finish off a meeting of scouts, assaulting the castle, boarding action, dragon rider keep, giant plant, and the shell walker, which took most of the video. So today, we have to do Spider's Gorge, the Kraken, and the Trenches. And since there's only three left, I will be making my own designs for these specific missions if they allow me to. So, straight away, let's get into, apparently, destroying some spiders. The crawling death lurks in these valleys. Burn it out. And instantly, I can see the enemy. So, we have two giant spiders there. So, if they're going to be like how I remember them, I think they're all about boarding and doing damage to your unit. So, you want to stay far away. But, I think it's only fitting that we burn them out. So, I think I'm going to go with either... A land ship or an airship focused on flamers, since they do lots of damage. You know what? Let's build a land ship. This will be a little bit of practice. So we have 5,000 as a budget. Let's do a land ship and an airship, maybe two 2,500s? Or maybe we'll just make one giant land ship. We could go with spider legs. I mean, that's weird, but we could. Just one giant land ship here. So the spider legs can hold a lot of white and are incredibly quick. But they are also incredibly expensive compared to everything else. So these are the large tracks in comparison. So these are basically half the cost. 1,400 propulsion, whereas the spider legs have 8,000 propulsion, but we don't really care about the speed too much, so as much as I do love the spider legs, perhaps we'll wait until the campaign for that. How about two sets of the large tracks instead? That'll give us a lot more health, but it all depends on how the enemy works. If it is boarding, like I think it is, then we're going to need units, so let's just throw some things together and have a quick test. In fact, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go straight into the mode itself and just throw some of the basic stuff against it just to see how these enemies even work. So here's a couple of the Infernos of some basic walkers. Oh, yep, yep, there's some units going down. Those little spiders will board. Oh, and they can leap as well. So we are going to need some soldiers to fight off those. Though it does look like the flamers go after them as they jump, but definitely not enough to stop them. Okay, so we're going to put down a couple of the guard barracks there, so we do have some guards to fight off the enemy. And we could have the spider bay! Mechanical spiders versus mechanical spiders. No, let's not do that for now. Yeah, I think just guards for now. So the marines can board enemies. Are the marines stronger than standard guards? Ooh, these provide eight. Oh, it's a huge um, barracks, that's why. Yeah, I don't know if these are stronger or better at all than the standard guards. So I think I'll just stick with the guards since that's all they're meant to do. And for weapons, they're going to get nice and close to us anyway. So going for probably flamethrowers is the way to go. Because this just does a ridiculous amount of damage. It's 15 damage 20 times per second. And it has actually an okayish range. So if there's a couple of those, you have guards. We should win this, honestly. Because I saw one of the spiders already, already take damage from the little test thing there. So... I think we'll be okay. Just throw some more things together. So it looks like the smaller flamethrowers will go after the enemies like um, the borders. So I have two of those. I have three of the giant flamethrowers. I have two of the bombers just because the damage from those is absolutely insane. And I still have some money left. So don't really know what to do next. We could have that on top because I think it looks cool. The command deck. They don't really need that. Only two enemies to be perfectly honest. We could add a torpedo bomber at the top, just because we can. Or we could just go with more standard weaponry, so we have some extra damage. Just completely try to out-damage the enemy. Probably want something with a little bit of a better uh, firing arc than that. Or a giant tentacle. Let's avoid the giant tentacle for now. Okay, I'm just going to test this for now. Um, don't think it'll win as it is, but... We can see. So, back to missions, over to Spider's Gorge, and let's spawn in the anti spooder It's a little bit big, actually. Okay, well, let's move forward. 
Enemy spider's already boarding. We do have the guards, though, so we should be able to do some damage. And that one plane's about to hit ourselves, so that's good. That should be an insanely high amount of damage being dealt. Yeah, the enemy didn't board at all. I think either the flamers stopped them completely, or the guards were just that good. Move forwards. Wait, I'm going to win this. Wow, yeah, the, oh, the flamers and the tracks. Takes a long time for this thing to um, get new orders. Oh, we're stuck on a tree. Uh, yep, this is uh, this is how I thought it'd go. That was way too easy. I think realistically, there should be a uh, a lower limit there on the cost. I might come back to this and see how cheap I can win this later because that was. A bit underwhelming, honestly, but, you know, it's still fun. The spiders are terrifying, but it seems like just flamers countered them more than I expected. I mean, I knew they would, but not by that level. A gigantic aerial kraken menaces the skies. Ooh, hello. You're a squiddy boy, ain't ya? Maybe just flak? Just loads of vehicles just armed with lots of flak. Flak's a very strong weapon, if I recall correctly, in this game. Let's have a quick look, see, so design and fight. Let's go back to land ships. So, weapons straight away. We're probably looking for just sheer damage this time around. So, nothing fancy or countery, just what does the most damage. So, flat cannon. It's reload. Okay, actually, no, it's not as good as I thought it was. Uh, for some reason, I thought its damage was higher, but no, it makes sense. It's a flak weapon, so of course it has a decent splash damage. Yeah, but damage itself for its size isn't great. But actually. I disagree with myself again. It is absolutely tiny. It's only too wide. So you have quite a few of those. There are the Imperial Cannons, though. Which would be cool. Okay, first of all, once again, let's see how this thing actually functions, and then we'll figure out a way of destroying it. It'd be cool to have just one giant vehicle versus this thing, because it's rare you get to, to use lots of giant vehicles, honestly. Send in the flamey boys! Okay, so it looks at things, it steals crew members. Oh wow, these things don't get orders very fast at all, do they? So if you have loads of crew to sacrifice, it really can't do all that much. There seems to have quite a lot of health. Not that I'm particularly using this well since I'm only just testing, but still. Okay, so lots of crew. And what I think is, it should be absolutely huge to stop it from getting past us. And we have 8,000 to play with, so let's go to Airship Editor. So we're probably looking at things like... Honestly, just a wall of rockets would be good, just because of the arc of fire means we could always hit the enemy. But I do really want to test out that massive cannon. Where is it? The Imperial Cannon, I think it's called? So let's go for I, then. It's 400 damage every 8 seconds. But it's a lot of upfront damage at the start. Then we go for an Imperial, Imperial Cannon in the core, kind of build it like a wall, and then have missiles at the top and bottom, something like that, and then have lots of excess crew. So three Imperial Cannons, these are going to do 400 damage each when they fire. We have two regular cannons already, and we're only halfway through our maximum cost. I am tempted just to say, let's just keep on adding uh, more and more Imperial Cannons. Just the heavy cannon. In fact, what I'm going to do, because I think it'll look cool, is have the heavy cannons next. Oh, they're almost as big. Uh, I thought it'd be a little bit smaller than the Imperial, but they're almost the same size, only one off. So there's lots of cannons, basically. Kind of going for... The, I don't know why I always end up with the shape. Almost like a broken tooth. Which is what I'm going to call this now, I've said that. So we have that... There are some weapons I do want to try out, like the Suspendium Ray, and I might actually go back to some of the other um, challenges to deal with that later. But for now, we'll stick with that. So the next size down then is just the regular cannon, yeah? It's heavy cannon, then just cannon. 
There are, of course, all the turrets and everything, but I just want to go with the cannons for now, so sure. Have two of those. And that'll be the front of the craft. Just lots and lots of cannons. I really need to use this more, the sponsons. Because apparently they can go behind everything else. Cannon mounted in the side projection of the ship's hull. Interesting. I don't know what I'm making right now, but I'm making it nonetheless. I just put some down here, just wanted to see them in action, but yeah, that's something we can do in the future, definitely. Okay, the Broken Tooth is ready to go. It's terrible, honestly, but it's going to be fun. We even have a command center this time. So, fleet command bonus. That's really interesting. So, this is essentially a capital ship. We could have added more. We could have been more meta with it, but I just wanted something which looked funky, and funky is one way you could describe this. It's got a chunk of moon, apparently. Because all good airships have chunks of moon. Oh wait, slightly reduced structural integrity due to size. Oh yeah, I didn't add any keels. Good, we're going to detonate it when we're hit. So the thing we don't want it to do is to get directly above or below us. I'm now realising actually this is probably a terrible design for this. <laughs> so that's good. Come on, broken to Oh, that plane got instantly devoured. Of course it can destroy planes. Look at it. It's doing ramming damage, we're hitting it. Oh, it can't hit us! Yes, we've got it stuck! Wow, I've accidentally built like a catcher in the middle. Ow, ow, ow. Yeah, it's just ramming us though, so it's doing damage. As long as there's main ca- oh, okay, it can flip. Oh, it's almost gone, come on! Keep firing! No, this is- Keep going! I've lost control, I think. Almost. Come on! It's so close to being... Oh, that is bad. Multiple craft would definitely do better here. And this craft is silly. I honestly thought this would be too easy again, so I just went with a fun design, but I'm really glad to see that's not the case. Let's try again. You know what, this time I'm going to be really silly and go right for it. So rapid fire. There we go, lots of hits there straight away. Come on, let me move, please. Okay. The skies! Yeah, use that rock to our advantage. Okay, getting lots of hits here for free before it gets to us. It's gonna ram us with the rock, by the looks of things. Come on, main cannons, fire again, thank you. Ow, ow, ow. Try and force it down a bit. Terrain advantage, lads! We are now a tower on this rock. The Imperial Cannons win the day! I count that as a victory, even though this design was terrible for that. Yeah, uh, having things with a better firing arc and fire up and down would have worked better there. Uh, even perhaps bombs, getting above it and just staying above it so it tries to move to us and we catch it that way. But the Broken Tooth won the day. And now the final one, the Trenches. Defensive earthworks and bunkers with flat cannons stand in your way. Ooh, so we have 3,600. Oh, I like this because it's a proper fight. So we have a walker there with two cannons and a rifle. Loads of flak. So essentially, this is pretty simple. Just build ground forces, right? Well, I wanted to build some tanks anyway. So let's build a couple of small um, ground forces. So there is that large trench before the first enemy walker, so that's going to be a problem because it essentially means that a lot of things like the small tracks are just going to get stuck. But I do just want to build some small tanks anyway because, like I said, I do want to focus on a ground um, campaign soon. So having some small designs ready to go would be lovely, some small intro designs. I mean, that would be able to walk over and be absolutely fine. The large tracks might be able to make it across, but yeah, let's build at least one small tank. I mean, it's nothing fancy, but it has a regular cannon, a little rifle, and a top turret. So I can't use this in the campaign straight away, but it's got enough firepower to it. Though it is very weak on the defensive front, it just has steel armor, and that's the first design. Now for a walker. Once again, super simple design. Uh, this one's using Gatling guns to get closer. Let's see how these two combo and just see if we can beat it with these. If not, then we simply keep on designing more craft. 
I will be obviously spending a lot more time building land vehicles once the campaign starts. So I don't want to spend too much time right now doing this because, well, it's going to be part of the campaign. So honestly, the main problem I can see here is just ammo. Um, there's a lot of enemies to get through and we only have one small ammo store per craft, which I think is a pretty big oversight. So I'm going to put you all in aim fire. Hopefully you all target... Oh, that's a flame and not cannons. Oh, well. Can we please remove it? from the game. Thank you. That'll, that'll be all. Okay. Uh, good. It completely went. In that case, move forwards. Ooh, that got close enough for the flak to hit it. Well, that's a little bit unexpected, actually. We just lost a lot of craft because of the flak. This little... Divot here is a nightmare for the walkers as well. So long range weapons are probably what we actually need here. So we can stick like this. See, these are just able to do all their damage accurately at that range. These, even on accurate, are probably not going to land every single shot. They are Gatling guns. Though we are doing decently. I'm going to try that again, but this time I'm going to focus mostly on the multi-guns and not charge into their flat cannons, because I didn't realise it would ever be able to hit them. I thought it was a much narrower um, field of fire. Okay, so a bit of a change. I've removed the top turret. I was looking at it, and for its cost, I just don't think it's good for this small fight. Um, instead, I just have a regular cannon and then a Gatling cannon on every single one of these, and then, of course, two Gatlings on the front walker. All of you aimed... You just stick with your usual. Then go over to aimed. And all of you move forward once you can. The cannons itself also have a longer accurate range compared with the other one. Oh, look at that. There we are. So in theory, we should be hitting more. Hmm. Oh, that was different. And it should take a very long time to run out of ammo. Yeah, not even halfway yet. Maybe I should have gone just two cannons rather than the Gatling. I thought I'd be able to move more forwards. I didn't realise it'd be so difficult and have to focus on one at a time. Honestly. Okay, yeah, I think that's a victory. Yeah, so that one worked out a lot better. Uh, I just, I've now learned my lesson. Make sure you have enough ammo. I thought we'd get away with a lot less. And that was definitely not the place to cut corners. So, yeah, they all have one regular cannon, one Gatling. That means they're good at both long and short to medium range. The walker at the front was a sacrificial lamb there just to uh, destroy the first enemy. And it worked out just fine. I think we could do a lot better with that, but that is the general gist of land combat, and that is all the missions done. Now, I was going to do some more designing after this, but it is getting light. I've just recorded some uh, something else for the channel, as you can probably tell. I'm a bit sleepy, my speech is going away somewhere else, which I can't follow, and I need to just try and get some sleep. This was really fun, though, and I think now we are ready for our next campaign, which is what I will be recording next when I come back to Airships Conquer the Skies. Currently, I think a land focus, though any other suggestions are very welcome. I may change my mind completely and go for a cultist run or something else. It all depends on how I feel on the day. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Airships Conquer the Skies is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I, pro I promise in the next video, I'll be a bit more awake and be able to talk more like a normal human. Well, somewhat like a normal human. For I am a human, just like you.